Um, so he really did not give a sense of, I think, of like the, the work that went into this. It was a months long process, like with multiple meetings, like multiple stakeholders in Los Angeles. And to my knowledge, I think it's the only time a public health department has been involved in, you know, being involved in like these festivals um, anywhere in the country. So mm. some of what you've seen up there, like you may have questions about, you may be like, that's not quite the direction I would want my event to be going, but like, given the response, especially, you know, many years ago when the Rayback was coming, and then the idea is just to shut it down. This is a, a really incredibly progressive response um, that we've seen. I forgot to ask uh, at the beginning, and I wanted to get a sense of the room, how many people in there, in here consider themselves part of the nightlife or rave scene? So, pretty good number, pretty good number. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure our speakers know the audience. Um, so, uh, so Ben's work, as you can tell from his presentation, is kind of left off on a little bit of a question mark sort of note. A lot of the events that um, this work was directed towards are no longer in LA County. Um, you know, like he mentioned, they did a fact card and they did a PSA, which were released and then withdrawn from the public, or at least the fact card was released and then withdrawn due to some media responses um, that said that the department was educating, you know, people how to use drugs mm. rather than the, act, the true harm reduction nature that it had. So, um, in the in the next step of thinking about like you know, true harm reduction efforts and educating drug users within the nightlife scene, um, if it's not the Department of Public Health that's doing this activity, you know, the question becomes who is who is doing this activity, and so. There is actually one organization in the United States that's doing this work, and that organization is Dance Safe. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Dance Safe. If you're not, check out their booth at this conference. Um, we have Carissa Cornwell, who is the National Outreach Director here, to tell you a little bit more about uh, what Dance Safe does and um, the kinds of harm reduction they do for the scene. The information that we have is presented in a non-judgmental way, and it comes from others that are in the community as well. And uh, uh, we try to give people information so they can make educated decisions about um, the choices that they might make regarding drug use. We were originally started in Oakland in 1999. We're a 5013C nonprofit. We do harm reduction in a peer to peer manner um, when we're providing the outreach. We have a network of volunteers all across the United States and Canada um, who share a common goal, which is to educate and um, provide factual information on recreational drugs. <coughs> Dance Safe is run by a board of directors. It has seven people on our board. Um, they are they are responsible for um, decisions as far as you know training volunteers, making new literature, and maintaining our partnerships. Um, we have one part-time employee who is basically, he takes the orders and he ships out orders that come in through our website. And he makes the test tickets, yes. We have no outside funding or grants. We exist solely from donations by individuals. We make a small amount of money from our test ticket sales, which basically just helps us you know, pay bills that we need to pay for us to even exist. And we have a lot of dedicated volunteers who volunteer their time and donate their time and efforts to help a community that they care about. We currently have nine active chapters in North America. We have doubled our number of chapters since January of 2011, <coughs> with new chapters in Detroit, um, Chicago, and Denver. And all of our volunteers are unpaid. 
and they are volunteers for Dance Safe because they care about others. These are our chapters. With all the new ones, well, except for Denver being in the Midwest. <coughs> Some of the things that we do when we are doing outreach is we provide information on drugs, we do field testing, we have information on safer sex, we provide condoms, we provide free water, information on you know staying healthy, as, and along with uh, damage to your hearing, which can occur from loud music. These are our drug information cards. Um, we have 16 total. We um, provide pill testing services and we do sell testing kits on our website. Testing kits can check for a wide range of chemicals, um, mostly things that are sold as ecstasy to you know, provide the user with it, the information they need before they actually take the drug to make sure that it is what they want to take. In the early 2000s, the electronic music scene was more underground, less mainstream, or not at all mainstream, and it was kind of like, you know, society wouldn't, did not accept the ravers. Um, we have seen a huge growth in the past few years um, with electronic music events going mainstream, being held in coliseums with, you know, attendance being 100,000 and even up to 200,000. Um, and with that, there, you know, there's always been a need for the services that dancing provides, but now with that many people in one location, our need has greatly increased. Oh, there's the, this is kind of our outreach. Um, we set up last year at Movement, which is held in Detroit in the Heart Plaza. Um, there was 100,000 people in three days that had went through there. Um, some of the challenges that we have is <coughs> the need to establish relationships with law enforcement, um, to kind of, you know, make sure that they're not going to prosecute me or the people coming to, that may get, you know, testing services done. Um, yeah, we represent a population that nobody focuses on. Um, <coughs> we're the only type of organization that focuses on music events and specifically electronic music events. Those are our challenges. Um, when we do pill testing, we look at it kind of as uh, you know the needle exchange, where they're going to do it anyways. You might as well prevent any harm that might come. And you know, if they have if they have the drug, it, it's better for them to know whether what it is before they take it. And maybe, you know, if it's not what they want to take, they won't take it. Um. <coughs> yeah, working with promoters and venues to make sure that the people that are attending the events do have access to water and first aid. It's kind of crucial when you're dealing with 100,000 people in one area. Um, Oftentimes I find that I'm the only first aid that they have, and I'm not very I mean, I'm qualified, but I'm not a doctor. Um, and so there's definitely a need for um, people to look after other people within the community. 